Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is episode 8 of our course on building Electron app with JavaScript. And today I want to talk about testing Electron app and specifically about testing the Electron specific code. So as I said before, and uh, you know, I don't see any reason to reiterate on how to test the basic code like this manager, for example, because it's just functions or I don't need to reiterate or how to test React components because we did that in the previous course. And if you haven't watched that, go watch it. I'll put the link in the description. You can just watch one episode on testing and you will know everything you need to do that. So what I'm interested in is testing the electron specific bits. In this case, we have the authenticate function uh, from both Crunchyroll and YouTube that uh, opens electron windows, navigates to Crunchyroll, uh, uh, requires user to enter the login and password and then saves cookies, right? So this is what we're interested in. This is what we want to test and this is what we want to know how to test. Well, to test stuff like this, you would use uh, Spectron, which is an official Electron testing framework from uh, GitHub guys. Again, the same people who made Electron itself. And it's based on uh, Chrome driver and web driver IO. Uh, if you haven't heard about web driver, it's essentially a protocol and a tool set that allows you to emulate user activity within the browsers. Mm, it works. So the Spectron itself is CI ready. You can run it on Travis or, uh, you know, any other service, I guess, because it's relatively easy to set up. It allows you to access to uh, almost all API of Electron. Uh, they are saying full API here, but actually what I found out during the live stream that is not true because some APIs are not available. Um, it uh, has the multi-window stuff. It supports promises so you can evade all the stuff. Uh, it has extensions and it's compatible with just about any testing library. In this case, I took Mochas from their examples because, you know, I personally don't mind using any of those. Right, so how does it work? Well, uh, so we again, we have this oath method and this is what we want to test. Uh, but we actually want to test it from user perspective, right? Because this is end to end testing. This is actually what um, what we want to see, you know, if the user launches it, clicks on all this button, enter his uh, credentials, and then hits enter if it works or not. Well, in this case, so we got a bunch of new dependencies. So uh, obviously, first of all, we got the Spectron itself. And we got the Mocha for testing. And as you can see here, we got the test uh, Mocha method. So this is very straightforward. Then we got our uh, index.js file here. I only did test for one of the methods, but you know, I think uh, it's kind of straightforward. So testing YouTube would look absolutely the same, but it will click the different buttons with different selectors. So I don't really want to spend time doing that. You can do it yourself. Okay, now let's talk about the code here. So as you can see here, I'm importing the application from Spectron and uh, before starting the tests, I described the suit. I set the timeout to 30 seconds. This is needed because uh, obviously it will start the whole Electron app. So depending on a configuration, it might take a while. I think the long longest test, which is the login actually takes about 20 seconds on my machine because of the Crunchyroll anti-bot protection, all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit, uh, you know, I mean, having 30 seconds is nice, basically. Next, we create the application. Normally, you would point that to your build uh, Electron app, but in this case, we want to test our source code. So what I'm doing is I'm saying that the path is our Electron binary, which is in node modules .bin Electron. And arguments will be our app, which is uh, the parent folder of the test, right? So this is this is it. And then before tests, we run uh, app start. So again, Mocha supports promises. So basically when I return it, it will wait for promise to resolve because proceeding with tests. And the same goes for after it will wait for it to stop before closing the test suit. So it works nice and easy. Right, so then uh, starting with a simple test, it waits for Windows to load, then just gets the window count and you know expects one window. So for this case, I took the uh, entry point and then disabled our DevTools window because obviously, you know, that we need to count it. And with DevTools, there will be two windows and will a bit complicate the management because you have to switch between windows manually. So we don't want that. Okay, next thing I do is navigate to settings. That's really straightforward. So uh, as you can see here, there is, so this is the dot client is the web driver actually and has a bunch of uh, APIs, including like clicking, getting HTML, getting, um, classes, whatever you can imagine, there's quite a bunch of them. I mean, there is, I believe, a link to that in um, 
in elect in spectron uh wait this is no this is electron wait a second spectron there was a link to the web driver api somewhere here i believe yeah web driver io there you go and there's api and here you can see whatever you can do you know like add value click clear limit double click like basically whatever the user can do with the browser you can do with web driver which is kind of nice all right so we click on settings we wait for settings to load and then we um get the Crunchyroll HTML and make sure that it's, that it's actually there. So the Crunchyroll plugin actually rendered, right? Next step is logging in. So this is a bit tricky. Uh, what we do here is first we click on the Crunchyroll login button. By the way, those um, IDs for the buttons and settings and everything was not set. So if you watch my live stream, I actually assign them during the creation. So those are now there for easier uh, testing. But you know, you always adjust your code for testability once you are get to this point. Right, so once we click on uh, login, uh, we make sure that the second window actually opened because we opened a new window for a login in Crunchyroll, right? We switch to that window. As you can see here, there's the window by index and the new opened window will be Crunchyroll thing. And then we wait for that window to load. So this is gonna be Crunchyroll. Um, what I do next is I check if the window actually has login form because this is what we're interested in, right? We wanna log in into the Crunchyroll. The thing is that when you run it first time, if you start with a clean slate, you will actually hit not login form, but the Cloudflare DDoS protection or you know the bot protection, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna try to get it. And if it's not there, we sleep for, I think six seconds work for me. I think there's like four or five seconds delay there, randomly generated or something. So we wait until that bot protection goes away and then we get the login form again. So we as, uh, first we assert that the form is actually there. And then we set the values for name and password. So I use the environmental variables. So you will have to actually uh, set your variables here because you know you don't actually want to hard code your login and passwords, especially for something like Crunchyroll here. And then you click a button that says login. Um, unfortunately, the um, uh, Crunchyroll doesn't have an ID for a button. There's two buttons on the page. One says register, the other says login. The positive side is that the web driver allows you to do selections like this. You can actually base, basically say, uh, click on a button that says, uh, that has label log in and that works perfectly fine. And then we wait and then we sleep for two seconds so that the app itself handles the login, closes the window and then um, assigns the cookies, right? Then we check that the window is actually closed. We switch back to main window. We go back to settings and uh, we check that the button now says log out instead of login. So here's a caveat. At first, I actually wanted to check cookies, right? Because here in, in login method, when we actually log in, we take the cookies and put them into the database. The problem is um, there is no way to access session from the um, from the web driver, or I didn't find it. I mean, I tried looking at the issues and they have an issue that says that it's not implemented. Maybe I missed something. Um, like if you know how to fix that, tell me. Because this was like, uh, this is the stupidest check basically. You know, I mean, theoretically, if the logout button is there, then we are logged in. So there's nothing to worry about. But because I cannot access cookies, there's also a second caveat, which means that once we logged in one time, if you rerun, just rerun the test, it won't pass because you will already be logged in and uh, even this test will fail because it won't find the login button, right? So what you need to do is you need to run this, uh, no wait, RM, yeah, there you go. Uh, you need to run this command. So uh, obviously all Electron apps has their data folder. In this case, our app is called BPGS minus Electron, which you can find here in the name, right? It has the folder on macOS created under the library application support BPGS Electron. On Windows, it's probably going to be something like update roaming BPGS Electron. I believe it is in roaming. It might be in local, but you know, this is like, you can find it quite easily. So basically we need to wipe that folder and then run test because then we'll start from a clean slate without any cookies and we always will be able to log in. The interesting thing about WebDriver and end-to-end -end testing is that actually because it runs the app and does all the sections, you can actually see all of that in real time. So I'm gonna hit start now and you will see the app opening. So here you go, where's our app launch? There's a crunch roll. Obviously it's gonna happen way faster than a normal human can do, but still, you know, you can actually see there's the DDoS protection, there's the login and password entering, there's the login button hits there, there's the page loading. 
it's going to disappear in a second um, obviously you know depending on your internet and how fast the stuff loads there you go so now it actually checked everything and we got three tests passing uh, 24 seconds as you can see the longest test as I said is login which takes about 20 seconds that's actually pretty much it so um, as I said again testing everything else is way easier because you don't need to have any end-to-end -end, uh, testing there you don't, you don't care about electron parts you can just test it normally as if it was simple react components or simple code right so it's, it's very simple end-to-end um, -end testing I mean it's actually not hard as well you do have to wait a bit because it's electron you know have a spin up spin down wait for all the loads and page switches and everything but in the end it actually with the current modern tools is very easy to test as well so don't be don't be lazy about that um i think that's actually it so we're done with testing um the next stuff is building for production packaging and releasing to github i guess and setting up ci for that but uh, ci setup is also straightforward because spectron supports for example travis so I think they had a Travis YAML here. So you can see that I think the only thing that you actually need to do is to say that the, um, where was it? There is, uh, you have to export like variable that says the, um, what do you call it? The terminal should be a specific thing. Wait, it's this electron again. I'm looking at the wrong thing again. Spectron, there we go. Uh, and Travis YAML. And then I think you just say that the, no, it's not here. Wait a second. There wasn't a docs. Um, Travis, they had to say, yeah, there you go. Okay, so before a script, there you go. So you have to export display uh, 99.0, and then you have to start the XVFP. You may wait for it to start, and then you can run it on Travis in headless mode, I guess. Or maybe it's not headless, maybe I guess it's gonna run it for real. So depend, judging by the display, basically. But still, you can run it on CI without you know too much hustle, which is great. Right, so yeah. That's basically it for testing. Uh, do let me know if you have any questions in comments and I guess we're gonna start next live stream sometime next week. We're gonna start with uh, preparing our app for packaging and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and as always, I see you next time. Bye.